Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja Live, and in the previous two videos we have been merging Ninja Live to an existing project and we have been adding Ninja Live component to a character. So this is where we are continuing the project. Uh, first thing I would like to talk about is pressure iterations. We already covered the topic, in the YouTube video details you will find the link, but briefly. Uh, this pressure iteration thing is greatly determines the quality of the fluid simulation and as you could see it's a very crude simulation in case of this smoke column and I would like to tell you a few things how it could be influenced so first I'm having a look at the details panel of this fluid container selecting ninja live component and going to the performance group as you could see the third option is maximum pressure iterations please have a look at the tooltips and on your own but right now it is set to 5 it's a very low number if I set it to 16 we get a fluid simulation with more turbulence and more details and one more thing I would like to do is to change the tracking of bones I'm getting back to the actor details from the component details and in the interaction um, yeah we don't have bone filters so probably the container is going to check trace all the bones of this biped let's have a look mm-hmm yeah but what I sense is that the brush size is a bit too big now I could influence brush size two ways. First, in the preset manager, and if I don't want to open the preset manager in the live component in the brush settings, I could simply globally scale the brush. And right now I'm entering this number, shrinking the brush uh, to much lower size. Mm -hmm. and what is happening? Well, uh, the fluid container is tracking all the bones of the mannequin and each bone is drawing uh, a dot in this collagen painter buffer and if these dots are small enough you could individually differentiate them so basically they are giving you the shape of the character and more fine details as the character is crossing this smoke column So um, that's the thing about pressure iterations, brush size and the tracking of bones. Uh, the next thing I would like to talk about is camera facing. Uh, you might have noticed that this smoke column does the thing. So it is always looking towards the camera. To make it more obvious, I'm changing the material to a non-transparent one by going to Ninja Life component generic and setting the default output material to an opaque one here we go so uh, that's how a camera facing plane behaves compared to the thing here on the floor which has a fixed rotation this one here has camera facing the camera facing could be switched on in the ninja live component by selecting the component going to live generic um, sorry live interaction and here you go the fall from the bottom camera facing and you could influence if uh, the vertical axis is logged or not so here we go uh, <laughs> uh, yeah we have a much better view what is happening with the character and the bones and the brush size thing so that's a simple case and uh, the point is well, let me just switch back this guy to the default material well well in the generic okay um, what is happening with the mannequin well we have a fluid simulation system merged in the mannequin as we did yesterday we added ninja live component and it is also camera facing but if I'm doing a fast rotation you have uh, you might have noticed this little staggering and it is happening because 
the mannequin's transformations are handled in his own event tick flow. I'm opening the blueprint. And as you could see, a ninja life component has its own event tick. And the thing is that if ninja life component does uh, the camera facing, as we could see in the live interaction, it is switched on. Basically, it is transforming the trace mesh every tick in his own uh, tick flow. But the problem is that the tick flow of the mannequin and the tick flow of the Ninja Life component might not be perfectly synchronized. But you could work it out by simply uh, doing some job synchronizing the two tick flow or We could do something more simple. First, as we have successfully merged Ninja Live, I could access the camera facing function, which is in a public library. So I'm just typing in camera facing, connecting it to the mannequin's event tick. And um, I would like to apply it on the trace mesh. So I'm connecting trace mesh. And in the same time, I'm going to the Ninja Life component and switching it off. So, if I disconnect this event tick, the result is that is no camera facing. I'm just compiling the blueprint and having a look what we have. Yep, uh, no camera facing. It's varying this uh, trace mesh like a skirt, like we did yesterday. So, uh, I have switched off the camera facing in the Ninja Life component. And I have added the camera facing function to the mannequin blueprint. And so let's see if it is happening. Yep, we have camera facing again. But the good thing is no staggering, no jiggering. Uh, it is in perfect synchron with the transformations of the mannequin. So much about camera facing. So, while talking about environmental effects and area effects, it is perfectly satisfactory to enable the camera facing in the Ninja Life component. In case if you're a maximalist and you have included Ninja Life component to a character that is uh, walking and rotating and doing uh, these active uh, uh, mobile uh, movements, you really need to do this and add camera facing into the tick flow of the owner. Right. Next thing we would like to do is talk a little bit about single target mode. Have a look at the mannequin. As I'm jumping and doing these fast uh, rotations, uh, the result is not really nice. We almost see the dots of the collision painter because we have a very high frequency changing here and there is not enough time and frame per second to sample this. So we have an alternative solution. Going back to the mannequin and selecting the Ninja Life component, I'm going to the generic options. Ah, sorry, no. <laughs> um, we are going to the interaction and finding single target mode. If I switch this on, basically I could force Ninja Live to track only one object, but do some interpolation between the sample points. And right now we are tracking bones, so I'm changing this primitive component to a skeletal mesh bone. Uh, we have already defined our bones. Well, this is going to take the first bone in the list, so probably the bone in the left hand. Let's see what we have. Yeah, only one hand is smoking, but as you can see, if I do these fast rotations, uh, basically, Ninja Live is interpolating between the points of the sample points, drawing lines or curves between the points, and so very fast moving objects could be easily tracked. And this option is made especially for these fast moving objects. Um, yep. Uh, one thing important to mention. I was always setting things by going into the third person character blueprint and selecting the Ninja Life component. You could access the same parameters by selecting the level placed actor and going to Ninja Life component. The main difference is 
that uh, if you set things in the blueprint, it will be applied for all instances. So wherever you spawn or drop the mannequin or your character on level, it will carry these settings. While if you do the settings here in the actor on the level, uh, well, these settings will be applied only for this instance. And if you delete it, uh, this information is lost. So it is up to you if you would like to do a unique setup in a single actor or you would like to set like class defaults. And in this case, you have to do it in the Ninja Live component. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're to talk about a few bug fixes. I have noticed a horrible bug and I'm very sorry for everybody who encountered this. I drop the preset manager on level, I start the game and I would like to point you to density. Um, well, I have noticed that in Unreal 4.25 and 26 this density and the speed parameters were forced to zero. This was because of an Unreal bug. I am developing Ninja in nin uh, Unreal 4.23 and as I was porting the project to 25 or you did it on your own, Unreal somehow uh, forces these fields to be zero. And uh, the reason for this is that if you set the maximum value here to 10.0 that is forcing a <laughs> it is giving back a zero maximum value so it's basically clamping the, the input field to zero if you set it to any other value like it did 10.01 it's working fine and it seems like a bug and I have fixed it this obvious way by simply adding one more digit at the end I have tested it and it's working fine but please pay attention in case if you have a ninja version 1.002 or earlier you will encounter this bug so you could fix it on your own by going to this <laughs> um, ninja live ui you could find detailed instructions in the frequently asked questions and issues documentation or you could simply download the latest ninja which is 1.003 well that's the thing about bug fixes. Well, um, thank you for your attention and see you next time.